Circular Motion. I've got the world on a string Sitting on a rainbow Got the string around my finger Thanks, old blue eyes. Is the world accelerating? Well, not the world you're standing on, but this world I've got on a string. As it goes in circular motion, is it accelerating? Well, let's think more about that question. In order to answer the question, if the world is accelerating, we need to recall two definitions. Let's first recall the definition of acceleration. Acceleration is any change in velocity. Let's remember that velocity is a vector and incorporates both speed and direction. Thus, if the speed changes, you're accelerating. Or if your direction changes, you're also accelerating. Let's re also recall Newton's second law that says force equals mass times acceleration. This really tells us that force produces acceleration, and it tells us one more thing, that force and acceleration are in the same direction. So that is, force and acceleration are both vectors as well. And so if we know if we're accelerating, we can also tell the direction of the force. What is the behavior of the world if I let go? Well, let's see if I let go right here. Well, if I let go, the world would just continue in its straight line path, and that's due to its own inertia. Remember that inertia is an object's tendency to maintain its motion. Here we can see that when the world was right here, it had a velocity in this direction, upwards. And its inertia is going to want to maintain its motion in this direction. Now what if I let go of the world when it was right here? Well, you could probably see that the world will continue in this direction, assuming that my circular motion is this way. Again, its velocity is this way, and its inertia would keep it going that way. Well, what if again, if I let go right here, you could see that the world would keep going straight downward. Otherwise, its velocity is down, and its inertia would want to keep it going in that downward direction. So if we look at our world constantly going in circular motion, you can see if I let go here, the world goes this way. If I let go here, the world will go this way. If I let go here, the world will go this way. You can see the velocity of the world is constantly changing direction as it goes around that circle. Thus, the velocity is changing because the direction is changing and I'm accelerating. But so it's accelerating because it is constantly changing the direction of its velocity. Now that we know that the world is accelerating on the string, what is the direction of that acceleration? Let's again think of it as the world accelerating and going around the string and the string breaking right when it gets here. We saw earlier that the world will just keep going in this straight line path. But if the world ends up here, what direction should I pull it to put it back on the circle? Well, putting it back on the circle would involve the world getting back to this position right here. So to go from its position here to getting back on the circle, as you can see, I would have to pull it towards the center of the circle. So I'd go from here to pulling it directly into the center. Thus, I would have to exert a force towards the center of the circle in this direction to put the world back. Now, so at every point on this circle, I'm constantly pulling inward on the earth. That center-seeking force we call centripetal force. And it produces the centripetal acceleration of the world towards the center. That is the centripetal force FC is a center-seeking force. And just as any force produces acceleration, the centripetal force produces centripetal acceleration, denoted by the C subscripts for centripetal. For honors, the centripetal acceleration is V squared over R, the, the velocity of the object squared divided by the radius. Also noting that the centripetal force and centripetal acceleration are in the same direction. They're both towards the center. Have you ever been a passenger in a car when it was going around a curve and feel like the driver just pushed you into the passenger side door? Well, let's think about what's going on in terms of centripetal force. As the car is going straight and starts to go around the curve, it's going from linear motion into circular motion. 
So let's take a closer look at that. So as your car is going around the curve, your body wants to keep going straight forward. That's because of your body's inertia. Once you're in motion, you want to stay in that direction. But when the car starts going around the curve, there must be a force, a centripetal force, pulling the car towards the center of this circle. Here we can see the centripetal force would be exerted this way towards the center of the circle. Notice there's no force that's pushing you this way into the car door. There's just a centripetal force pushing the car towards the center and your inertia carrying you straight forward. So as you actually go around the curve, your body wants to keep going straight, but the car door pushes in on you and exerts that centripetal force. So the car door pushes on you towards the center of the circle and exerts a centripetal force on you, even though you feel like you're being pushed into the door. That force that you feel pushing you into the car door is actually not a force at all. But the sensation of that is called the centrifugal force. And it is a fictitious force. It doesn't really exist. It's your body's inertia pushing you into the door and the car exerting a force inward or towards the center. Thank you for watching and see you in class.